Hi guys, Miss Molly here for another First Chapter Friday. Today we are reading How to Be Brave by Daisy Mae Johnson. As always, if you like the sound of this book and you want to keep reading it, give us a call or stop on by and we can pull it for you. If you'd like something else, then uh, we can help you with that too. All right, my friends, here we go. Chapter one, a temporarily wonderful childhood. The young Elizabeth lived with her parents in a big house in the countryside. Although she was an only child, she did not grow up alone. She had a dog that was so large and brown, he really was more lion than dog. His name was Aslan, and when Elizabeth went to school, he would sit quietly at the front door and not move until he saw her coming back up the drive. Elizabeth's parents spoiled her deliberately and happily. They lived for the moment and her childhood was, a perfectly was as perfectly formed as the diamonds in her mom's wedding ring. She would have chocolate cake for breakfast and ice cream for lunch before going to bed at midnight and watching fireworks outside the window. And on the days when there were no fireworks and just the distant pink of a setting sun, Elizabeth would sit outside and think about how much she loved her life. It was a strange thing for a child to think, but Elizabeth North was a strange child who lived a strange life. She went to school, of course, and mixed with other children, but the school was down in the village and not the sort of school that you and I might even recognize as a school. It was two rooms, and the older children sat in one, and the younger children sat in the other, and Elizabeth was sent between the two rooms because there was nobody else her age. Sometimes, when she went from one room to the other, she would wander outside instead and feed the birds with the spare crumbs in her pocket. On one Friday in July, when it was almost the end of term and everyone was thinking about the school holidays, the little ones had been allowed to do coloring, but the older ones had had to do math. Elizabeth didn't want to do either, so she was on her way to slip outside. She had gone precisely three steps when Mrs. Fraser, her tall and sensible teacher, stopped her. Math, said Mrs. Fraser, you need to brush up on your times tables. But that's not fair, said Elizabeth, folding her arms. Mrs. Fraser didn't look concerned in the slightest. Life isn't fair, Elizabeth. You'll be doing math this afternoon, and if you continue with this attitude, you'll be staying behind and doing extra. I'm quite happy to do my knitting while you do some more sums. I imagine it will be educational for us both. You have no jurisdiction on me after school, said Elizabeth. It was a somewhat inevitable that Mrs. Fraser thought the opposite. She kept Elizabeth in detention that very day and straight after the last little one had been picked up by their parents, spent the next hour drilling Elizabeth on why X plus Y equals Z. In all honesty, it wasn't a productive session because Elizabeth did not want to be there and neither did Mrs. Frazier. But then everything changed. So if you want to keep reading this again, give us a call or stop on by and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye friends.